Good evening, everyone. We are going to be talking about anxiety and fatherhood today, and we're looking forward to uh, diving into that topic. There's certainly a lot to say on it, so we won't uh, look at it from a, a real detailed view, but we will get into it from a 30,000 foot level. Before we do that, we're going to jump into this whiskey. We are the Old Fashioned Dad Podcast, seeking to love dads through the person and work of Jesus Christ, entering into tough conversations on faith, God's calling, marriage, parenting, sex, all while enjoying good whiskey. I'm Christian Bringoff. And I'm Christian Harris. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so what's the difference with like cutting versus punching? Sure. So, uh, so I prefer hole punch myself yeah. uh, because it gives you more consistent hole and draw okay. uh, as opposed to a cut where you may do it right, you may cut too much, you know, you may... So I prefer like, because usually the difference between like a cheap cigar and a good cigar not only is taste, but the quality and consistency of the pack. Okay. And so usually you'll get a thicker, like a stiffer and more consistent draw with uh, nicer cigars than you will with cheap ones. And so I personally prefer, prefer the, the whole punch. Okay. So right in the old center there, huh? It was right in the center. You just kind of like gentle pressure and kind of rotate as you go. So I should probably put a little more uh, moisture in my, my humidor there. That, there we go. The cigar sounded a little dry, but it did the job. did the job. Well, let's take, you know what, actually, let's taste this whiskey. Huh? All right, let's take, yeah, let's taste this whiskey. All right, so what are we, uh, what are we drinking here today? We are drinking early times. Uh, Bourbon. Tasty. Um, you know what? I take that back. Is it? You take it back like that's not what we're drinking? Or? We're drinking early times, but it's not, uh, I don't believe it's bourbon. It's whiskey. Okay. So. What's the difference? So bourbon is, have you heard the saying that all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon? Probably. Okay. <laughs> so, um. There's another saying out there, if you're in the tequila world, that all mezcal is tequila, but not sure. all tequila is mezcal. Yep. So what, what makes bourbon bourbon is a couple of things. Uh, the first one being it needs to be a 51% uh, mash bill, meaning the recipe has to be 51% corn. Okay. And then the other 49% can be like some combination of other grain like uh, rye or wheat okay. or something like that. And there might be a few others in there, but... Um, and then it's got to be aged in uh, New American oak. Okay. Uh, sometimes I, I've I've seen differing opinions on that. Different whiskey writers say different things about. Uh, like I've heard some say that it doesn't have to be aged in New American oak, and others say that it does. And then I've heard some say like it's four years that it has to be aged. Um, and there is a difference between uh, bourbon whiskey and then bourbon whiskey that's con bottled in bond, and that's a completely different topic. Um, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I'll, it sounds, sounds like you get deep in the weeds on that one. You could get really deep in the woods on that one. So um, I'll, we'll cr we'll cross that bridge at another point. Not in this not in this episode, but okay. another point we'll get into that. Okay, good stuff. It's tasty. I like it. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a good it's a it's a nice lighter whiskey, mm -hmm. eighty proof. From one of my favorite places, Kentucky. 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 We're also smoking some cigars today. We are. Kind of, again, you're more of a cigar guy than I am. Um, what are we smoking? Sure. We are smoking the VSOP Heckle Mano Vintage mm. Reserve, uh, which I don't know much about. Uh, it's, it's part of a Dominican uh, sampler uh, I get from the cigar club I am part of. Um, you know, they've never failed me. I've never got a bad cigar from them. So it's a nice kind of a medium, uh, medium palettes, I guess. Body. I don't know. Yeah, medium body. Uh, yeah. It's not super dark, not super light. Um, so I like it. I mean, it seems to, to pair well with this, which was not intentional because I had no idea what kind of whiskey we were going to be drinking. So. Yeah, it is kind of a nice <laughs> surprise, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it is kind of a lighter a lighter feel on the cigar. I, I personally, again, being pretty new to cigars, um, I... I <laughs> Like I get so overwhelmed when I go into like this big walk-in humidor. I'm like, which one? Yeah, which definitely. cigar defines me? Right. What? What? Where? What personality am I on? I so I typically stay away from the ones that like 
the cigars that look super dark. So I'm right, like, the super robust. I'm gonna get a headache. Yeah, those I'm are, gonna get a huge headache. It's gonna be a little rough. But maybe maybe that's where I like work myself up to. Like now I can drink 130 proof whiskey, no problem. Sure. Whereas we call like, it being an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Without being an alcoholic. <laughs> I can throw back a bottle of 130 proof, yeah. no problem. Well, that's at 8 a.m. <laughs> Maybe not. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. 10 a.m. <laughs> 10 a.m. 10 a.m. We got to have 10 a.m. Uh, yeah, let's, yeah, come on. Yeah. No, but this is, a, this is a really nice pairing. Um, early times was something that I got turned on to uh, by some of the whiskey community on Instagram. Uh, and, I, 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 you know, again, I'm, I'm still learning about bourbon mm-hmm. um, and whiskey. And so I, I think what I actually picked up here wasn't necessarily a a bourbon it's just a it's a straight kentucky whiskey but either way um it's good it's 80 proof um like a lot of american whiskeys american bourbons it's aged in oak it's from the land of whisk land of bourbon i should say yeah. uh, kentucky so um it does pair well 80 proof with a nice light cigar hmm. yeah it works happy accident yeah it works yep i mean when, when you're looking at you know cigars hopefully you go to a cigar shop that they actually know something. You can be like, these, these are the flavors I like, and they tell you what, you know, uh, you know, give you recommendations. I mean, I, I for one, am always a fan of like Monte Cristo, like never gone wrong with, you know, a, a white label Monte Cristo or whatever. There's a couple of, you know, Romeo and Juliet's and stuff that are kind of some name brand, bigger ones that, that do some, some, uh, some good stuff. This Art- one particularly, I think, is made specifically for Thompson Cigar Club out of, out of Florida. Arturo Fuente. Yeah, they make good cigars. Cohiba. So. Yep. Those are the only ones I really know. Yeah. But but even then there's, you know, a, a range from lights to dark depending on, you know, which series you, you pick and stuff. So you kinda get to know them as you smoke them. So I had a I had a cigar buddy again on Instagram um tell me that like cigars go in thirds. And uh he says like the back third, the final third of the cigars, like that's where all the nicotine hangs out. Mm. And uh so like he's he says he personally smokes two thirds of the cigar yeah. and then he's done. Really? Yeah, and I was like, huh. I kind of okay. like that buzz at the end. Dude, it's, it is there. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of nicotine in cigars, but I mean, you're talking like something like this. It's a 45-minute smoke. It's, it's absolutely a 45-minute yeah. smoke. Uh, but it's nice because it's not like a cigarette where you have all those fillers and nasty chemicals. Like, it's just tobacco. Do you think you could get to a place? You know what? Actually, I didn't think about that now that you made that point. Not all those nasty chemicals. Yeah. yeah I didn't think about that. Yeah. I mean, there's no filters because you're just smoking tobacco. Hmm. Uh, leaf. Do you think you could ever get to a place where you're like, you're smoking like a cigar a day? When I was deployed? Oh yeah. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> There's, you know, so much downtime and you're stressed out and you're not, you know, sleeping well and yeah, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I was smoking a lot of cigars when I was in Iraq. I got to share a funny story um, that may help transition us like into like the next thing sure. about, you know, talking about successes and being a dad and stuff mm-hmm. like that and ultimately kind of set up our topic uh, for the rest of the episode. But so since, since we started this podcast, I've been like a lot more w- aware of just kind of the habits and stuff I do. Yeah, okay. Um, cause you know, you have to share them with. Yeah. Audience. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I want to be an example father to any of the listeners, you know? Uh, but at the same time, I'm like, uh, man, I can be a really crappy father. Sure. I can be a really crappy father. Um, but on the way over here, Literally on the way over here, uh, right at right at the high school, mm-hmm. where you where you make a left. Yep. There was a family that was like they were approaching they were approaching the crosswalk, so I had to stop um, and wait for them. And they were kind of moving real slow, but they had they had a couple of boys, young boys, um, uh, maybe like eight or nine. And one of them, like as he was walking, he was <laughs> he was dropping his drawers and he was peeing on trees like a dog was just marking. <laughs> <laughs> he was just marking, marking the trees. He, he would, he would a little bit on that tree, yeah. he'd pull up his hands, move on to the next tree, a little bit on that tree. <laughs> and, and like, and all the while, like mom and dad are like walking in front and, and, uh, and the second it, like dad would turn around, like kid already had his drawers up and like dad had no idea. Like his kid was just taking a huge old leak on these trees right in front of everybody. Oh my goodness. The kid, and he was like, he was super proud too. He was, he wasn't embarrassed. He okay. was just like, Marcus yeah, territory. what? I'm, I'm, taking, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. You that's, know, that's my tree. That's my tree. <laughs> yeah. Now when he goes back to those trees, I, Hey, that's mine. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, uh, uh, yeah, I've just been noticing a lot more like, w- you know, dad stuff and what dads do. And sure. it's a lot of unorthodox stuff that dads do, I think, you know, just like kind of sure. DIY stuff. 
sure. you know, where moms kind of seem, they seem like more thought out and more organized. Dads are like, hey, yeah, we're, you know, we don't have a helmet, so we'll build you one out of wood. Sure. You know, <laughs> you know at the end of, of anything, it's always, you know, but, but did you die? <laughs> right. And is there a cool story involved? Yeah. You know, did you get some cuts and scrapes? All right, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think moms are more apt to maybe ask for advice or Google or where dads are just kind of like, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, like the, I mean, the uh, the old dad that you would see like in 80s movies that would, would never ask for directions. Sure. It would take him like three hours to get to a place that should have only taken an hour. Right. You know, but he got there. Yeah. You no, know, hey, we got here without asking questions. Exactly. Which is kind of, you know, think about it, it's kind of a weird badge of honor. <laughs> it's just stubbornness, you know. I mean, dads are weird, Self, man. Self-reliance. Don't you think that. dads are a little weird? Y- yeah. I mean, I don't know if it, dads are just males in general, but... Maybe the weirdness really gets drawn out when you become a dad. But. I, I mean, I think you gotta. I mean, I, I think as a dad, you, you're you're trying to find your own voice uh, with your kids, and and I think some weirdness just happens. Um, I mean, at least that's that's true for me. Yeah. Like I find myself, you know, when I get up in the morning, I'm like dancing around, singing silly songs to my kids, sure, and uh, looking for every opportunity to embarrass them, sure, like every opportunity, sure, to embarrass them. It's interesting you say that because I always consider myself a not a morning person but like a night person. But in the context of being a father, like the nights when I'm most irritated and short and grumpy, while the mornings like I'm kind of goofy and you know jovial, if you yeah. will, with my with my kids. I don't know. Maybe I'm secretly <laughs> a morning person. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, what's what's our topic today? What are we talking about? <laughs> Anxiety. Anxiety. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll get there, right? Okay. We'll 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 somehow make this uh, a smooth transition as a couple of. Um, average goofy dads. Yeah. Um, so let's let's move into like the other part uh, that I that I, I love doing every episode because I, I mean if I was going to tune into a podcast I'd want to hear kind of some of the successes and the uh, you know maybe the f- I guess failures sure. of of dads because it, it makes me kind of feel like man I'm not alone. Sure. You know. Um, anywho, let, I don't know. Let's spend a few minutes on it. But like any yep. any successes for this week or I don't know even today oh, I guess this week man. It's all blurred. I'm trying to remember what's happened since our last conversation. Today's Sunday. Today's Sunday. Sunday. Today's Sunday. Yeah. Okay. According to some Sunday, the uh, twenty no, nineteenth. 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 April nineteenth. April nineteenth. Um, yeah, successes. The. I feel like, you know, in the context of of what's what's happening right now with the the COVID nineteen stay at home stuff that I'm finally starting to kind of, I feel like I hit a kind of a tipping point of. I don't know if I just say tolerance, but like I feel like it's much easier for me now to stay calm when my son's losing his shit, um, or to be able to sense when I'm about to lose my stuff to be able to walk away, <laughs> uh, as opposed to just let it escalate. You know, hmm. um, like like you know, ten minutes you know before you got here, Nolan was just melting down and like not listening. You know, whatever. Yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't pretty, but you know I didn't let him get the best of me you know like walked away for a minute regrouped went back stayed calm nice. and uh three weeks ago like that would not have been the case you know <laughs> so the pandemic's been really good for you it's been really good for me <laughs> for my relationship with my son with my wife uh business not so much but <laughs> the challenges of owning your own business but uh yeah so i mean there's definitely, there's definitely uh, there's definitely been some uh, silver linings of of this i mean it's very challenging but i think god's kind of you know uh, what's what's the terminology i'm looking for kind of refining sure you know me and my my parenting uh and husbanding through this i mean i think that's a great perspective to take you know like i i hear so much complaining uh right now about this pandemic you know and that's not just from dads it's from everybody sure but i think that's a great perspective to take yeah so, yeah well and I, and I just in general try to I try, I try to just be a positive person, not just for positive sake, but for like the larger context of like God's goodness, you know? Yeah. And maybe it's because, you know, I've, you know, been through, you know, I've been, I've been through some shit, man, uh, in, in the seen military. Seen some things. Seen some things. <laughs> um, Got that thousand mile stare. Yeah, I mean, but when, you know, because in, in, in a sense, you know, when you go through special forces training or you're deployed and life really sucks and you come back here, you're like, America's a bunch of fucking weenies, you know? Like, it takes a <laughs> while for that... Uh, you know, from transitioning from survival, life and death stuff to, 
oh my gosh, my coffee was lukewarm this morning when my barista gave, or whatever it is, you know, the stupid stuff that people complain about. And so like even this, this pandemic, it's like, yeah, it sucks. It's tough. It's tough for everyone. It's not going to help if I'm bitching and moaning about mm. whatever it is that's, you know, I, I think it's one thing to be like, yeah, this is really hard. It's what I'm struggling with versus whine, whine, bitch, moan, complain with, with no goal in mind or no, you know, you're just kind of like throwing out your negativity into the universe, mm. you know. Yeah, that, that really does put a perspective on things like being over in Iraq, just taking grenades, like literal grenades, yeah. and then coming back and being like, you know, the hardest thing you're dealing with in your life is like a late mortgage payment or, uh, sure. you and, know. And that's not to diminish the suffering and, and stuff. I mean, it's all, we all live within a context of, you know, like this yeah. is our experience. And if the hardest thing you have is, you know, whatever, you know, like it doesn't mean it's any less valid, but it, it also like in the grand scheme of things, like God's still in control. There's still roof over our heads. Sure. We still have our family. We still have our health. Like, you know, um, I don't know. That, that, that's always been my default. Um, you know, obviously some days are easier than others. Uh, you know, a week or two ago, I was, you know, did my taxes. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm out of money. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? Uh, you know, and and I did what I don't do well. Uh, and it's hard for me, but you know, I called some friends that, you know, are very business savvy or, you know, are in a different place in life. And I'm like, here's my situation. what I do? You know, like what, you know, cause, cause I don't easily ask for help. Yeah. But kind of get off on tangent, but no, I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, it's all relevant. I mean, like the, the successes that you experience, like are going to draw up feelings and emotions and ultimately touch on like fears and anxieties and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, it's good to talk about that because we know that that's going to like transition ultimately into like some core stuff. Right. Right. You know? Well, and, and on our topic, I mean, that's, I guess it's pretty relevant because, you know, this week has been okay, but like the prior two weeks, like I wasn't sleeping. I was just anxious because I'm like, do I shut down my business? How am I going to make my mortgage payment? Like, how am I going to do this? Like, I've got no answers, you know, and, and I'm not used to being in that situation. I'm used to being like, here's, here's what I need to do. Execute. Okay. Problem solved. <laughs> no, I'm just like, yeah. I, there's so much out of my control and I'm just stressed out. I'm just anxious. You know, how do you deal with that? Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, I, I think those are good. Uh, like I, I think as, as, as men, fathers, husbands, um, that's our, the, the temptation is always, you know, obviously to kind of push that down, you know, to, to make it look like, you know, everything's okay. Everything yeah. is stable, you know. Meanwhile, like, you know, inside it's like a bubbling cauldron, you know, that's going to reach critical mass and, you know, you're going to, you know, the anxiety reaches to a point where, like, you melt down and you usually explode, mm-hmm. you know. And for most guys, it's like in bad ways, right? you know. Um, I haven't checked the audio on this. Hopefully we're not clipping. Otherwise it's going to be really annoying to listen to, but just crossing my fingers. We'll just have to redo it, I guess, or not. Um, I'll briefly share, I think, a success or successes. Um, I feel like I'm lacking, lacking some successes, but, um, my Hmm. daughter, my daughter came to me last night and she was like, been, it'd been a long day. And, uh, she came to me and I was just like, I was just laying on my bed and, um, I could see that like something was wrong with her, but she really wasn't talking. And so she just kind of like, daughters is old, my, oh, my old, sorry, my oldest daughter, Emma. And, uh, she just, you know, I, I looked at her and I was like, Hey, are you okay? You know? And she just kind of was kind of withdrawn and quiet. And, and she was like, hmm, like that. And so she left the room mm-hmm. and I, I didn't feel right. I was like, yeah, something feels off. But I think there's a lot of there, there's a lot of moments that I've had in in being a dad where I'm just like, eh, whatever. She's she's nine, you know. But something something just didn't feel right. So I I, I kind of went after her and um, she sat down on the couch and, and she was just kind of staring out the window, which is just not common for her to do. And I was like, hey, are you all right? And I could see that she wanted to talk, but just didn't know how to talk. And uh, I just kind of sat with her and she eventually she she eventually said, hey, dad, when's this all gonna be over? I was like, oh man, you know, um, what a, you know, that, that's, that, those are the emotions that are going inside her little, her little body, her little heart and brain. And, uh, and I was like, you know, sweetheart, I I really, I, I wish I knew, I wish I knew, you know, but it was an opportunity for me to like sit with her, comfort her, even if I didn't have any answers, 
um, and communicate God's love and show her God's love. And yeah. I just said, hey, why don't we, why don't we play video games together? You know. So she sat on the iPad and uh, played her video games, and I brought out my Nintendo Switch and I played mine. Okay. And uh, I mean, it lasted maybe half hour, forty minutes, and mm-hmm. um, she just fell asleep. And so, I mean, I know she was tired, but but it, I don't know. For me, it was it was. It was, it was an important moment to connect with my daughter. Yeah. You know, so I really, I saw that as kind of a win. That sounded like a big win. Yeah. It's awesome. So, let's, uh, let's move into kind of the topic at hand, um, you know, anxiety and fatherhood. I wish I had thought up of like a, a better title or something like that, but I mean, it's such a broad topic and there's so many people that have written so many good things sure. on it, but. Maybe we'll come up with a better title and then people will be like why do yeah. you keep calling it this maybe, yeah maybe <laughs> we're just two, we're just two guys in a backyard uh two small business owners smoking cigars drinking whiskey and trying to survive a pandemic so we'll we'll make sense of what there we can go. make there sense of um but i read a really good article uh this week i uh i subscribe to um the journal of biblical counseling uh it's run by an organization called the uh, christian counseling education foundation okay. and they have some of my like just for theology and psychology, have some really fantastic um, articles. I haven't found too many places that really kind of marry those two things sure. really well, but I think they do a really great job. Um, are, are there other organizations that center on biblical counseling? Like I've done some training kind of as a lay person, you know, uh, under like the Redemption Group stuff and biblical counseling, and uh, I feel like we use some resources from them. But. Um, you know, I've, I've struggled with that over in, even in my career to try and find um, places that really, really marry psychology and theology together mm-hmm. pretty well. Um, and I haven't found too many outside of Christian Counseling Education Foundation, at least that I think are really, really reputable. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember who Marshall used to do the, the VBC stuff, the Volunteer Biblical Counseling. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, I don't remember. Um, we could get we could really get into the weeds on that one. Yeah, we'll do an episode on it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do <laughs> do a post mortem. Yeah, um, I'll try to come up with some resources, and uh, maybe that's something we can circle back to in another episode. Okay. But um, anyways, I wrote I, I not wrote I read an article uh, by the author the author's name, and he was ultimately the, he was the uh, the senior editor uh, for the Journal of Biblical Counseling. His name was David Pallison, and, and he he uh, he passed away last year. Uh, but he wrote an article called A Man's Identity. And so I just, I went through it a couple times and um, I, I, his second page, he just, he, he, he kind of lays out ways in which men um, identify themselves. And so, and the reason why I'm like talking even about identities, because I think that it has a lot of connection with how a man experiences anxiety Okay. Um, and how uh, a father enters into that sort of thing. So, uh, I was good, I was just going to read off the ones that I had like I had written down from this article. There's, <laughs> I, we'll go. They'll go quick. Uh, ways in which a man can, um, can and often does identify themselves: um, accomplishments, lineage, ethnicity, job history, schools attended, marital status. Parent, parental roles, political leanings, uh, sexual desires, psychiatric diagnosis, uh, money, having a lot of it or a lack of it, sure. uh, failures. I thought that one was really interesting. Um, yeah. Approval or rejection by others, angry, addict, and divorced. And that's certainly not an exhaustive list. There's... Sure. I feel like we have like an episode deep dive in like each one of those. <laughs> I, yeah, you could you could really you could really cover all of those. Yeah. But um, I thought it was interesting that you know he 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 jumps right in right away and he just kind of takes this five pound sledgehammer to uh, you know he he's not trying to crack men over the head with it or anything like that, but he's trying to make them wake up and go like these are the ways in which you are identifying. Okay. You know. So what's um. I mean, I find the whole identity thing and, like, what motivates us being being drawn from kind of what typically is subconscious, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Oh, how do you how do you relate that to I guess anxiety? Uh, like I, I'm I'm failing to kind of see the gap yeah. there. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, and I, I'm glad you asked that question. You kind of you got you got you got to it before I did because um, I was like I was reading through the article and thinking about this podcast, and I was like a couple of the questions I wrote down was like how does this article connect to fatherhood? Mm-hmm. You know, because it's not specifically talking about fatherhood, sure. um, and even. <laughs> Even a little bit more specific, how does this article connect to fatherhood and anxiety? You know, um, what what David Pallison gets to ultimately in this article is that um, a man's identity, first and foremost, and I'll just I'll just quote him. Okay. Your true identity is who God says you are. You will never discover who you are by looking inside yourself or listening to what others say the Lord gets first word because he made you he gets the daily word because you live before his face he gets the last word because he will do the comprehensive life review it's like wow a little little context there (laughs) yeah perspective yeah yeah so I I was like okay okay um I mean there's there's a lot to dissect out of this um he goes on to talk about faith and how that's also connected with, with identity. But we don't necessarily need to jump into that. But, um, uh, but, our, but, for, our, but for our listeners, uh, you can certainly find this full article uh, on uh, ccef.org. Uh, a Man's Identity is the title. And, it, and this has a, a ton of application to women, too. It's not just for men. Sure. Um, but, but to get to your question, though of how does this article uh, just connect to fatherhood and anxiety. Um, and these are some of the thoughts I wrote down is when, when men um, define who they are by something other than God, it creates space for anxiety to settle in. A man addresses anxiety by looking at the core of identity and fatherhood is lived out of Christ. And so, and where, and I was trying to think of scripture where you know, where this could be uh, tied in. And the scripture that I come back to a lot of times uh, when, it, when it gets to the issue of anxiety specifically is uh, where Jesus is talking to um, the people on the Sermon on the Mount. And he, and he says the famous line, you know, do not be anxious. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I would love to spend a whole episode just talking about that because I think there's just so much there. Um, and he, you know, in it, Jesus talks about there's commands um, and like he, he uh, provides people with worth and value and stuff like that. And, but ultimately, at the, end of, at the end of the almost 10 verses, he says, um, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. And everything being what he had just talked about. Mm-hmm. You know? So again, listeners, go back and read over Matthew 6, 25 through 34. There's a lot of a lot of stuff to glean out of that as it relates to um, anxiety. Um, so, how I'm trying to tie this together in hopefully not a chaotic way is that as fathers, we can put our identity in fatherhood, but that's not where it, uh, that it primarily should be. And when we put our identity primarily in our fatherhood or in something else, then it leaves more room for anxiety to happen. So where we need to start is in that Matthew 6, 25 through 34, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I'm not saying that I have all the answers on that one. Like, what does that look like? But we can at least start with prayer. And we can at least say, hey, Lord, what does, it, what does this mean? How, how do I seek first the kingdom of God um, and your righteousness? And how does this pertain to fatherhood? How does this pertain to anxiety? Because we're, we are... Um, going to experience anxiety as dads. Like, that's going to happen. Sure. Um, we are not going to get away from that. But uh, God, Jesus, invites us, especially in that scripture, to come and pray, to come and seek him. Um, and that he promises that he will provide for us. And I do find a lot of comfort in that. Okay, I'm talking a lot. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's it all sounds good. <laughs> um, my, my initial thoughts are, because as you're talking, you know, it's like, you know, what I what I find the the maybe the question that might come up would be, well, you can't help but have you're gonna have multiple identities, you know, like we're fathers, we're husbands, we're uh, 
humans or Republicans or Democrats or, you know, whatever, you know, kind right. of those alignments male. are. Right, male, you know. Um, you know, but I mean, I think to your point, it sounds like what you're saying is like, but our primary, our deepest identity and the one that matters most and where it needs to start is in Christ, is, is in, you know, a child of God, as in, uh, you know, a son of God. Um, and, and I think that's that's key because like, like you said, like we're not going to be able to avoid anxiety. The goal is not to avoid stress, avoid anxiety, you know, but how do we respond when we're there? Like, do we repent quickly? Do we go to God or do we do we double down on our own efforts and our own self-reliance? You know, like, I mean, that's kind of my default is like self-reliance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, when Jenny's like, when, when my wife, you know, is saying, hey, you know, I'd like to do this, that, and the other thing. I interpret that as you're failing in this, that, and the other thing, and you need to do better. As opposed to what she wants and what I need is go to God and, you know, have him empower that and inform that. Um, not, you know, oh, I just need to, like, be better with my time or <laughs> make more money or whatever it is. Right, right. No, I, I think perfectly summed up. You, you did a much better job of uh, making it more concise than I did. But, uh, but I think, like, you're right. We're, we're, we're going to have things that um, we are and, and that 